Welcome to Washington Square Park, one of the most popular places in New York City that is reputed to be haunted. Haunted because underneath Washington Square Park is believed to be buried over 20,000 people. Originally outside the city walls, it was a potter's field and also a place of execution. Today, it is a place mostly of celebration and maybe that's what we all need to do with that which haunts our lives. But first, let us pray. Speak, Holy One, through words ancient and modern. Give them new life and new relevance for our lives as we live them in these days. In your many names we pray. Amen. Do you believe in ghosts? I do. Herod did too. In the Gospel lesson we heard that he thought that Jesus was John the Baptist come back to haunt him. The Gospel then goes on to tell the story of why he had good reason to think that. Herod knew that he was the guilty one, not John, but he beheaded him anyway. In 1992, then President Bill Clinton did a 60-minute interview after the Monica Lewinsky affair. He wisely said, I think I did something for the worst possible reason, just because I could. I think that's just about the most morally indefensible reason that anybody could have for doing anything. Herod was a king. So when John the Baptist had the temerity to confront him about his behavior, Herod had him arrested and ultimately beheaded simply because he could. Yet John's death didn't ease Herod's guilt. Herod had power, wealth, a beautiful lover, but his life was haunted by the terrible guilt for the deed he had done. Now, the liberal church doesn't have much use for guilt, yet, as Freud pointed out, without it, all civilization would cease. Guilt can be the work of the Holy Spirit, urging us toward changing our ways and becoming the person God intended. Of course, guilt is unhealthy when it haunts our lives only because of what others say. It's also unhealthy if you do nothing about the wrong you have done. It is just one way our lives get haunted. I was in a store one day and ran into a guy who had been a longtime church member. I observed that we hadn't seen him in a while. He looked visibly uncomfortable, as we preachers can make people feel, and he mumbled something about how busy he had been. It was only later that I realized I had been mistaken about who the guy was. I might never have realized my mistake, except that later, as I racked my brain trying to think of his name, it finally dawned on me that the guy I thought I had been talking to had been dead for a couple of years. During the worst of the AIDS epidemic, when my church was doing hundreds of funerals, I often found myself waving at someone on the street only to realize that the person I was waving to was actually dead. My favorite Broadway musical is Les Miserables, and hopefully I'll be preaching about it this fall. I remember 40 years ago when I first heard the song that Marius sings after the brief battle at the barricades. He's imagining that he is back at the cafe with his friends as he sings of empty chairs at empty tables. There's a grief that can't be spoken. There's a pain goes on and on. Empty chairs at empty tables. Now my friends are dead and gone. 
Phantom faces at the window, phantom shadows on the floor, empty chairs at empty tables where my friends will meet no more. In the musical, it's a very moving song. But when I first heard it in the context of the AIDS crisis, when so many of my young friends were dying, it took on a whole new meaning. Marius expresses guilt that he remains while his friends are gone. Survivor's guilt was a common feeling back then in our community. Grief can seem like a pain that goes on and on. Like guilt, grief can haunt our lives. And I've known both of these personally. Next Sunday is the fifth anniversary of my husband Bill's death. He was the love of my life. And I'd like to say that time has healed my grief. But it is not. It remains a deep bruise on my soul where even a gentle touch can cause blinding pain. Bill haunts my life and always will. Foolishly, I used to ask couples to pledge to love until death do us part. Now I always tell couples that this vow isn't long enough. Death may part us physically, but it does not end our love. I've come to believe that the endless pain of grief is proof that the Bible is right when it says love never ends. Forgetting is not a part of the healing process for either guilt or grief. When I looked at the two scripture lessons for today, I couldn't imagine what they had in common. In the first, David is processing the ark of the Lord from its rural location into Jerusalem, the city he had built to be the dwelling place of God on earth. David was so excited about the event that he stops several times and dances. Once while he was dancing, his wife Michal looked out the window and saw him and was embarrassed. David, however, has no such inhibitions when it comes to the passion and devotion of his faith. His inhibition-free joy is amazing, especially when you remember the mistakes that David had made in his life. Like Herod, David had committed a very public adultery. Then the prophet Nathan rebukes him, much as John the Baptist did with Herod. The difference is, David listened to the prophet and repented. Repentance is an old-fashioned church word, yet all the therapy in the world won't do us as much good as this biblical concept. It simply means recognizing what we have done wrong, acknowledging it, and turning around to go a different way. David did exactly that. And in Psalm 51, we read his very public confession, an appeal that God will not turn away from him. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, but restore to me the joy of your salvation. God heard David's prayer of repentance and David danced with restored joy. God would have heard Herod's repentance, too. 
Ironically, Herod thought John the Baptist had come back from the dead to haunt him. But the truth is, Jesus had come to tell Herod he was forgiven and to give his very life to convince all the Herods of the world that we are forgiven. David danced for joy despite all the things he had done wrong in his life. And he danced despite all the losses he had suffered. And Lamott wrote, You will lose someone you can't live without, and your heart will be badly broken. And the bad news is that you never completely get over the loss of your beloved. But this is also the good news. They live forever in your broken heart and you go on. It's like having a broken leg that never heals perfectly, that still hurts when the weather gets cold. But you learn to dance with a limp. Some of you are old enough to remember the movie Ghost. In it, Patrick Swayze plays Sam and Demi Moore is Molly. They are a young couple deeply in love. Sam is murdered by his best friend whose greed and self-absorption allowed him to rationalize his heinous act. Sam's ghost is trapped in this world and no one can see him or hear him except for a medium named Oda Mae Brown, played hysterically by Whoopi Goldberg. Sam persuades Oda Mae to help him communicate with Molly. And ultimately he is able to protect Molly and his ghost is able to move on to the next life. And the movie is sappy. It's a love story and the supernatural stuff is pretty hokey. Sam is a man who is unable to talk about his emotions or even express his deep love. When Molly would tell him that she loved him, all he would say was, ditto. Sometimes our pain from life's losses and failures can tangle us up on the inside and like Herod, it keeps us from dancing freely, like David. In the end, even as a ghost, Sam finally understands the treasure that really endures in life. Molly, he says, it's amazing. The love inside, you take it with you. And so you do. In this life and hopefully the next, we are haunted by love. Either the love we have known and celebrated, or the love we've rejected and regret. Herod wasn't able to accept God's redeeming, liberating love. David was, and his life was freed to dance for joy. My prayer is that if we are haunted in this life, may it be by all the love we have known and shown, because love is stronger even than death. And if we are haunted by love, then my prayer is that our church will become the most haunted house in the world. Amen.